you very much. Yeah, let's get this done. The um, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to do the construction update now or later on? Do it right now. Do it right now. Perfect. Okay, Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, Christy. Yeah, we uh, we have actually mobilized in advance of, of uh, tonight's resolution, um, and uh, we have a, a kickoff meeting, a construction kickoff meeting scheduled for Tuesday, the twenty second, uh, which we will be meeting with the village of Porchester and the main contractors uh, that are involved. Uh, we've already initiated the uh, switch of the phone service from Earthlink to Lightpath. Uh, so we've gotten that project going, and uh, they're I'm, I'm most interested, if you could, just, when are, what, what's the anticipated move date? The anticipated move date is going to be Columbus Day weekend right now. Which is 10, what date? Uh, October 10th, 11th, and 12th. So, uh, and when you say right now, you know, how much confidence can the people at home have <laughs> in that date? How much can the people in town arrive? We've been whipsawed on this thing. Uh, endlessly, so I want to, you know, Mr. Nardi, you have experience with this stuff. How how confident can we be on that? I don't think so. No, I think you probably won't be in there probably to the mid-November. That's just me. And why do you say that? Because stuff always happens. Right. Stuff it's a government happens. project. <laughs> yeah, it, the Jefferson Avenue Bridge was supposed to take six months. Yeah. It's two and a half years now. It, it, stuff always happens on a job site. They're going to start opening walls. They're gonna shoot, there's going to be stuff that they're not that they didn't anticipate. So, how about I, cost? I, I, I have confidence. Well, how about how much cost I'm overruns? Positive. Thank you, thank you. Well, how about not cost not overruns? Not no, I don't. I, what I don't want to do, I'd much prefer to say no, mid-November, and beat it, than say October and come back to the people at home. And so, I, I'd I much would, prefer to do it that way. I would say mid-November, if you know. Okay. Because I just think it's too soon. You got a lot of work that you have to do I mean, in, yeah. in a short period of time. We don't have to book the movers yet, do we? No, I, but we have. A, we start paying no. rent November no. first, correct? But we we no, we pay rent. Uh, when yes, you we start no, paying no, rent no, on no, November first. So so there is uh, uh, okay and um, right. So I mean, I just want we don't want to we want to prepare that we want to we want to deliver. We want to prepare the public for a well, success. Can I suggest that you know we we are we put a range that we're planning to move right. between. Yep. October 15th and November 15th. That's fine with me. On, and we'll have a much more accurate update soon enough. Right. You know? um, and I think, you know, if anyone can keep this project on track, it's Mr. Nowalnik. So I think we have to revisit this and have a more accurate date, but I'm comfortable saying a range. Okay. So our goal is still Columbus Day weekend. That's our goal. But, yeah. And we are going to push for that goal. I think Councilman Nardi makes some good points. The building is an old existing building, and there are typically problems whenever you open up walls and do construction. However, we feel confident that we have a good plan. We have a good architect. We have an excellent contractor. And I think we've laid this operation out quite carefully. So. We're confident that we're going to be able to make that schedule, as you say. You know, you never can tell what's going to happen. And also, when you have uh, materials, sometimes like finishing products, sometimes when you go to order them towards the when you're getting close to the end of the project, sometimes they take a few extra weeks. Yep. You know. Well, we could plan to fail. We could actually plan to move on Thanksgiving no, if what, we what want. I, what I don't want to do is be sitting here November first and telling them January one. That would be a horrific. I, I don't see that happening. I understand. But that's that's what I want to I want to make clear, is that I'm not going to be sitting here, in in October, telling people January one. Then I will be. Then we will. Have, everybody will have an absolute right to be upset, and in the first, miss as soon as you have a missed, send an immediate email to the board. That they want the board to know. I, I, we, we, we know so so that I think we're, we couldn't be any more clear that we, we, we you know that we have a range mid October to early November. We'd love to get out on Columbus Day weekend. That's the target. That's the goal. But it, what I, we don't want to be hearing is is a two month missed. And if we do, we want to know right away and why. Uh, what about cost overruns? Uh, you know, is there any way to protect for those? No. 
Well, the only thing is, is that the contractor is going to have to, if he sees something that's got to be, that's not in the plans, it's going to be an, over, an extra, he's got to let Bishop know, he's got to write up what is wrong, he's got to have an extra sheet, you know, that it's got to have to be written up, and approximately the cost of what it's going to be to make the corrections that have to be done. Now, what about um, how? I see, I'm, I'm more residential. Uh, my well, my work I do all residential. I really don't do commercial. Okay. But e even in the residential stuff, I've seen all you know, the bigger right. homes. Sure. And uh, you know it does happen. Sure. Well, no, no look. Obviously, want to minimize the other. How are we managing the project? Are we meeting with the builder a weekly? How do we? How are we, we, uh, we. That's one of the reasons we're having this meeting on Tuesday. Uh, our what I've usually done on meet on projects like this is we would have either weekly or roughly every 10 days or so we would have a contractors meeting that would be attended by the architect myself uh, councilman Villanova if possible yeah, we, and any other related trades that might be uh, at issue at that particular we, we, time we've already already discussed this we're going to look to identify at this meeting on Tuesday we're going to identify the specific day and time where a meeting will be held every week so we can always have uh, an update. We can be there on site. The meetings will be happening on site where the construction is happening. So we can get real time information. To have a meeting every day, no, 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 no. But to have a meeting once a week, we'll, we'll be spot on uh, with that. Mm -hmm. With regards to uh, changes, uh, you know, we, we've uh, we, we, we've uh, uh, scheduled everything in, in such fashion that we're in a position where we're looking to even reduce the cost. Uh, during right. the construction, and Wonderful. we've discussed that in the past already, uh, where there is opportunity where we can make changes to cost reduction. That's what we're looking for, not necessarily to the cost overrun. So, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to come to the meeting. Oh yeah, no doubt. Oh, wonderful, you know, great. I'd like to, you know. Yeah. So that'd be great. Well, because of the year, right? no, that's perfect. And Bishop, would you please send the board a, a, a post meeting email, two paragraphs, <laughs> on track. This is problematic, not problematic, but I want two paragraphs that don't take more than 10 minutes. I want a summary of the meeting on target, on progress, I want to, and I want to be a phone call uh, immediately if there's anything that, that, you know, puts us beyond November 1st that looks like it's going to be problematic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Nowatnik, have they uh, produced a project plan yet in terms of timing and phasing? No, that's, that's what we plan to expose on the uh, meeting on Tuesday. Okay, so we uh, we're, right we're hoping to integrate uh, all of the disciplines uh, into a schedule that everybody will be aware of. Right, so it's difficult at this time to make an accurate assessment as to the completion date you know, based upon correct. that Absolutely project. Absolutely correct. Secondly, is there any sort of incentive plan for the contractor to finish early? No. There isn't any penalty or, or any incentive at all if he goes beyond a, a certain date? Uh, I'm not aware of any penalty built into the agreement. Okay, I thought there was some sort of, uh, we, we talked about one time about a performance bonus. Or right, or we, we did discuss that, and uh, if I remember correctly, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bishop, uh, that was actually uh, an item that... Um, when we went out uh, for a second bid, that was a that was contention. A, correct, that was a, that was a contention with, mm -hmm. with the, with the uh, contractors because... Uh, it, it wasn't something that they could control. It's not, not, it's not new. It's not new construction where they can control all the aspects. So that was, uh, that wasn't part of it. I've been on renovation jobs where they had, yeah, they had the final. They had to be done by a certain date. Well, the contractor did. You know where they had, if you, if they were after a certain yeah. amount of time, they got well, fined like a thousand dollars a day. Right. At one time, we 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 talked about getting pro, um, performance bond. And then we didn't get enough bids in, so we looked to that, put a back correct. end bond on that. Mm -hmm. And did that ever happen? Yes. Yes, the, this project will be bonded. Okay. Great. Any other questions for Mr. No uh, okay, great. Thank you. Oh, actually, what? Oh, sorry, what? Nope. Looking forward to it. Looking okay. forward to it. Oh, no, you might, we got the, might, we have festival policy. You might as well stay oh, up there, right? I need my mm -hmm. Another, okay. Yeah, 
Uh, I think the key item is, uh, you know, most of this is repetitive information. Uh, the key item is the uh, sample uh, questionnaire that uh, we provided you. And uh, we appreciate the input we got. Uh, that's uh, in that spreadsheet, little spreadsheet package there. Um, and uh, what we tried to do here was we tried to be as, as comprehensive as possible in terms of uh, getting quantifying information for anyone that has a festival request. Um, and uh, certainly we can add to it, but uh, you know certainly we start off with the key things, you know, name, date, etc., purpose of your event, um, all the details of the organization itself. Yep. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for this. Do you have a summary of the recommendations, or what? what, what? Well, we haven't made any recommendations yet. I mean, you know, the 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 question here is is. Uh, um, um, we're trying to get a sense from the. Council, uh, in terms of, are you looking to accommodate these? No, 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 no. Let me be a thousand percent clear. Okay. No festivals, mm -hmm. unless right. approved by the board. I right. Thought I, I, I thought well, that's. Uh, I thought I was very clear. Right. Uh, at the, at our last meeting, and the last meeting, I suggested that we have that we have uh, ultimately, uh, you know, uh, maybe three tiers of uh, of applicants. You know, where there's three thresholds, uh, but at the end of the day. If there's someone who wants to make application that exceeds a threshold and they want to make application to the town board, they can make it. But at the end of the day, I agree with Supervisor Carmen, Carvin that this is, uh, this is a non-starter. We're, we're not discussing this any longer. Well, I, I, I think actually, but I think if, uh, as Councilman Collins points out, you do have... Well, there's some. I mean, you know, for example, with the yeah, first... Yeah, but I just, I just want to... I wanna, so yep. let, let's just go to the recommendations, which okay. I think are clear Fine. and consistent with what okay. we discussed. So on page two, the first recommendation is a stick, strict adherence to our residency process. Correct. Done. So, okay. Done. Make that part of the policy. Okay, Second wonderful. recommendation is to insist that any event more than 100 be required to rent out both both venues. Yeah, what I don't what, know if I I don't know if I let's come back to that. Okay. The third recommendation required any event exceeding 200 people to submit their application to the town board at least 120 days prior to the event and present a at a public meeting the details of the event. So I yeah, I think I think that's consistent with what we talked about, correct? Yes. So recommendations 1 and 3 should now become policy. Okay. Easy. I don't, uh, yeah, too, why do we have to? I feel like 150 people don't fit in the mansion alone, is that? No, uh, the mansion capacity. But why are we forcing them to rent both? Because when you have large groups, they have a tendency to take over the yeah, whole well, park. Just let the person running the pavilion or the other one know that there's another group in there. I don't know. Uh, okay. The problem we have there is parking and, right. uh, and, and egress into the park. Right. So if you have 150 people, it's not necessarily everybody's carpooling. You may have 150 people at uh, 100 people at the pavilion uh, and 100 people at at the mansion at the same time, and that may yield 400 cars. Hold on, so, so well, okay, but what our concern what our concern was the capacity in the park, and for example, large weddings, very often large weddings, they rent the entire park out. So we calculate the the fee structure for the mansion and the pavilion. And this way, that wedding has more or less exclusive use, meaning... Yeah, I understand that, but you're okay. forcing them to do it. I just yeah. said yeah. No, but I I'm think saying, no. but, but, but under, uh, if I, 150 people... This is 200 or more. What? No. no Second no. recommendation. Oh, I, I'm sorry, 150 or more, right. Because the You pavilion, want them to rent out both, and I'm saying... Right, I, well, the I, pavilion I, only has a capacity of about 150, 160. Right. Right. That's that's the seating capacity in the All pavilion. Right. So, so once you start going beyond that, I don't. I, 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 so I, I'm not in favor of the second recommendation. Okay. I don't know if the other rest of the board has a. Well, if you have right. a, here's the thing: if you have a hundred, and I don't understand the logic of it. If you have a, uh, an event with 150 people, right. they cannot rent the mansion because it exceeds it exceeds the the, the what capacity. What is it? The okay. The mansion is 100, roughly speaking. Correct. Yeah, so 150 right. eliminates the opportunity for the mansion. But well, why, why, why does it eliminate the... Because we, the capacity of the mansion is 100 people. Right. So you can't rent the mansion knowing that you're going to go in there with 150 people. If you, if you have 100 people at the mansion and 150 people at the pavilion, 
Why, I mean, you're renting you're both. Saying, you're yeah. renting both, I'm and the that. obstacle there, if you're renting it both to two separate people, right. our obstacle from an operation standpoint is parking. It's the cars. That's so, it. So then, then well, it's also the, the activities of the events are, are clashing. If you have uh, a, a picnic outside, a fireman's picnic or what have you, and they're doing their thing, the people in the mansion may may have, you know, different kinds how of music. Does it, how often does it happen that they clash? Uh, it probably happens six, seven times a year. Summer, all right. And yeah, and it's mostly in the summertime. I don't want to bundle yeah. them together, like when you rent, when you're X amount of people, you're getting this and that. Not right. that you necessarily have to rent it. It's sort of like we want to present it like I you're mean, getting. If, if you it's like say, you having a party at right. If you want to instruct the staff to say you, between the two facilities, you shouldn't have more than however many people, 225 between the two facilities. I'd rather do it that way. So in other words, if the staff knows that the pavilion event is 125, they know that whoever wants to rent the mansion that day can't have more than 100. Right. So you achieve the same goal, right? That's you good. That's fair. Talking about park capacity. So you want to say 225, or what do you want to say between the two two, the two facilities? Well, no, that would be up because we can't we can't package it that way either. That that would be up to the to the staff to make that call when they're speaking with the people who are right. No, I'm saying so. We just got to tell them the limit. What's the limit? Is it 225 or 200? I would say it's 200 between the two facilities, right? So it's 100 <laughs> yeah. people max at the mansion, and it's 150 absolute max at the pavilion, right? Well, that's what we would like. I mean, you know, the pavilion really doesn't have a max per se, but that's the max seating capacity yeah. is well, 150. The, the question: If you've watched these festivals, excuse me. Yeah, but, I but, just, yeah, but I'm but, trying to clarify the point. If you watch these festivals, they take over a much larger area than just the pavilion. But they not, have never that's the happen. whole point. It's not going to happen again. It's never going to happen. No festivals. Never going to happen done. again. Oh, it's done. It's over. Okay, so now we're talking about normal. No, we're talking about real church, human beings church church going picnics. in there, and they're going to have you have a one woman who wants to do her wedding, and you got Our Lady Mercy Church here, right? And you're saying, you know what, you. You, now you have 150 people, and God damn it, you got to rent the pavilion. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Because you know you 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 you, you, the, you know the woman. Why why are you, you going to force the woman who's having her wedding, and she happens to have 150 people, she happens to be popular. You're going to force her to rent the pavilion. That makes no sense to me. But I understand the concern that we don't want to have too many people in the park, and the park has a, a limited capacity. Okay. So if you have a pavilion event with 125 people. The woman wants to come in and rent with 175. You say, no, you can't do it. On that particular day, we exceed the park capacity. The reasonable person who rents for the wedding is going to rent the whole park because anyway. they're not yes. going to want to have, right. Yes. Right. Uh, you know, someone's bar people. barbecue right. yeah. happening alongside a wedding. The reasonable person. <laughs> Softball comes through but the window. Right. Right. Yes. Right. 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 So. so the only question is, what's the maximum capacity? We, I'd rather say 225. And you, you manage it however you want. It's between the two facilities. We no more than 225. To to more than 225. Okay. Whether it be a single event or two events. Yeah, yeah. Is that... I mean, I think we have to stick within the... Whatever so we say. Would, would, if I could ask the question, if we change the 150 to 225, mm -hmm. would that, no, recommend, that, would that recommendation you're work? You're trying to force somebody to do something they don't want to do. If I don't they, want to force somebody to do something they want to do. They're not... They've got to come before the board anyway. Right. Okay. No, no, because no, no. they're over two hundred events now. No. He's oh, oh, you're his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Yeah. No. Okay. So, Bishop, it's it's real yeah. simple. So okay. It's almost two different. We're gonna, if, are we prepared for two twenty five as the capacity for the park? We're talking about two twenty five, the capacity for the park, if somebody rents both the pavilion right. and the mansion. No, not somebody. If it's an individual, they've got to come to us. Right. So it's two different two different clauses. I think we're right. talking about. We right. split. Split this. There's two different terms. Right. One is talking about the max capacity from two separate events, two small events, one at the mansion. Two twenty five. That's two twenty five. Okay. okay. And Got then it. we're talking about if you're a single event and you're gonna have two Access of two hundred you come to us for approval. Correct. Yeah. Right. Regardless of which one you're looking to rent right. or both. Well you think okay. but again, it's uh, it, it, they would it would they would have to rent at that point, at that point. both facilities. Regardless. Oh yes, one yes, can't yes. yes. Agreed. So, so the, so where we have two independent events, the capacity is two twenty-five. And that's going to be uh, needs to be managed by staff. Correct. 
and then you have uh, on a, any any single event that looks to exceed 200 needs to come before this board. Correct. With it. Okay. So one and three stand as are. Right. And forget. We'll re re rewrite. We'll two. rewrite uh, yeah. the second recommendation. Okay. okay. We, number four. Is there a fourth recommendation? Yeah. Oh. Yes, we should definitely increase the security deposits. Yeah, yes. surprised you didn't want more. No, I, I, you know, no, I think I would take the security deposits, make it 300 and 200 if you want. Or the two, make the make it just a single deposit, three, 250, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Make it 300 and 250. Okay. Regardless. And, 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 and anything over 200, we'll, we'll, make, we'll, we'll do it on the fly when they come before yeah. us. Right. And Bishop, okay. uh, just, just fill us in on how uh, it's working with our security program there. Okay. Uh, well, in general, uh, uh, A, we give people an opportunity to hire uh, private security, which uh, we're working with uh, a variety of... Um, Auxiliary police uh, f uh, from uh, the village of Portchester, uh, and we hire them as independent contractors to supply security for alcohol related events. Uh, that seems to be working reasonably well. Uh, we've had uh, no incidents uh, that we know of other than the festival, in uh, festival related uh, incidents. Uh, and uh, I think it's working fine. Our insurance. Uh, Event insurance that we recommend people get, uh, uh, many people are extremely thankful that we actually give them right. uh, a, an opportunity like that. Uh, and that uh, also seems to calm people down because they realize that they have something at risk. So in general, uh, it's, it's actually worked pretty well. Now, the Village of Rye Brook uh, Police Department still has their uh, uh, contract proposal, which... Uh, you have as part of your uh, festival packet there, you might want to take a look at that. Um, and that is uh, there, and we would recommend that if, in fact, there are any festival-related events or festival-type events, uh, that that be the position uh, that the council takes. Uh, mainly because of the experiences that we've had, uh, we think we need a, a higher level of security for events like that. And the uh, the uniform that the uh, security wears? Uh, they don't. Um, what do they wear? They they wear plain clothes. They're um, they, a. They're, they're not allowed to. They're, they're not allowed. Uh, they're, they're not allowed to wear their their uh, police uniforms, as I understand. They're dressed appropriately. They are dressed appropriately. Okay. Or they they better be dressed appropriately. Understood. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wadley. Okay, um, Mr. Uh, the Honorable Mr. Mecca. Well, I say inverted, but it's okay. Sorry. Are we supposed to be reviewing these applications at all? Oh, uh, is there any? What happened? Is, uh, uh, so, you are there? There's no festival events scheduled at this point, are there? Uh, I'm sorry. I think there's one that is. Uh, that is still on the books. Uh, virtually all of them have canceled. Uh, we had three cancellations. Uh, there is one. I don't know if they're here. Is there anybody here? I'm a community church. We had made contact with David Thomas. Um, ah. He invited us to come tonight. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a new event that... that uh, it's a festival. Uh, I'm an application we were given. Right, well, we're working on an application package, but if you want to come up and explain your event, this is a brand new event. Uh, we did have... Well, hold, hold on, just before you come up, we'll have you come up in a second. So is there any, before this gentleman comes up, is there any... Yes, there's one event uh, out there. Uh, uh, the gentleman's name is Nala. Uh, a, it's about 300 people. Uh, and 300 he, people? Well, that's what he says. Well, then, then therefore, he needs to be before this board. And uh, when August? He so was, he, he was, it was suggested to him that he come is here. He here. Not that I'm aware of. No. All right, then he's done. There's no, no, that's the policy, he's done. Okay. I don't care, I, mean, I don't care who he is, what the purpose is, if it's over 200, he needs to be here. And I, I presume you informed him that he should have been here. Yes. Okay, yes. then he's not here, he's toast. Okay. Sorry, you know, we, we, I have zero patience uh, uh, we were very clear, you know, we, 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 we took it upon ourselves to have a special meeting 
just for this. Mm -hmm. We, 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 we had clear instructions to you, so hopefully Mr. Thomas and yourself have communicated very clearly to this gentleman that if he didn't come here tonight, he's out. And okay. so if he has a problem, have him call me direct. Not a problem. Okay, uh, so there's, I think, does anybody on the board have an objection to that? No. No, not if he's been no. told to come. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with it. Um, great. Um, so, uh, please, so <laughs> well, that welcoming, that one, come on up. <laughs> well, come a little closer. Well, here. It's good to meet you, Faisal. Yes, sir, sir, exactly. Nice to see you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to We won't hold the uh, against you. My well, you're here, so you're, you're here, you're here so you're, you're already. My name is Jeremy Ziegler, Reverend Jeremy Ziegler. I'm the lead pastor of a new church that's opening here in central Westchester. We're actually in negotiations to lease a property in uh, Port Chester for our Sunday worship services. I don't want to give the name of that location because we don't have that agreement finalized yet. Um, but my wife spoke to David Thomas. He was actually very kind. We were not informed of any kind of application process, um, but he did ask us to write a letter. Uh, then I had reached out to you, Supervisor. And so uh, David just mentioned to us to come to the meeting tonight. So Great. I am trying to follow procedure. Good, good, um, good. I don't know if you passed along a copy of our letter to you. I don't think so, no. Okay, it, it may just be easy if I can just read yeah, it sure, that'd quickly. Yeah, sure, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah uh, take your time. I already gave him introduction. We are currently in negotiation. I'll skip that part. Let me get to the, to the request. Uh, one of our priorities is to be engaged with the community in a variety of ways, which includes providing safe and fun activities for families in the area. Uh, in addition to other activities we have planned this summer, we'd like to do a free movie night in a local park in August. Uh, we visited Crawford Park and thought it would be a great location for this event. Therefore, we were writing to request use of the park. Uh, we live in Harrison. As I said, we're looking to hold our worship services in Port Chester. Our vision is to be a regional church, to be engaged with needs of the community. It was interesting to hear the presentation that was given before. Uh, and I, we also have three young children, so one of the things we want to do is provide some just uh, safe and fun activities, wholesome activities for families in our community uh, as a way to be a service uh, to the community. So the free event will entail showing a family-friendly movie, uh, providing some snacks, ice cream, facilitating some other fun activities for kids, such as face painting and a photo booth. We wouldn't call our activity a festival, uh, simply a movie night in the park. Um, we plan to contract with a licensed and insured company that will provide full setup for the screen projection and other logistics involved. Um, and we wanted to make special requests for use of the park in the evening. I know the park is closed at dusk, uh, but obviously we're showing a movie, so for projection purposes, um, we were going to ask for use and, of the and park. You guys would Finance funded? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, and it would be a free event, um, Great. family and friendly. Do you have any sense of how many people? Um, we were, we are were planning around 100. That's my the number my wife gave me to, to bring. Um, you right. know, it's some of our folks and then some others we'll invite in the area. Um, like I said, family friendly event. We're going to show a Disney. And do movie. you have a do you have a date? No, because David uh, had suggested, David Thomas had suggested right. that we get approval and then work out a date with him, which we were happy to do. Well, you know, so now so that's what. So I think. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming. Sure. You know, second of all, I think these are the kinds of activities we'd like to encourage. You know, I'd like you to encourage, this is exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah. So even though you don't happen to live in the town of Rye, you know, uh, you know, I mean, if you're bringing a free movie, a family-friendly movie to the community, you know, and we have a night available and you're looking yeah. to lease in Portchester and operate in Portchester, you know, I, it seems yeah. to me, I, I mean, I, I would look favorable, you know, look, it's not 500 people. Uh, you know, I, 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 I think this is a very different event than we have 30 vendors, mm -hmm. 700 people over running the park. And I think, so we're, just so you're aware, we're reacting to that kind of event where we're told it's 150 to 200 and you end up at 700 yeah. uh, with 30 vendors who are told that there's going to be 800 people. Uh -huh. So, you know, so I think it's a very different dynamic than we're talking here. But please, let me, let me hear from the board. You just, you're not advertising in the papers or anything like that? It's just with your congregation? Um, with our congregation, we would like to engage the community some, maybe passing out some flyers around Rye Town. Uh, you know, it is something to engage the community. And I think in the spirit of what Supervisor Carvin said, to add something, to our knowledge, we're not competing with any town movie nights that, right, right, some of the towns Actually, do have that. Actually, sorry, just one quick thing. Uh, Monday night. This coming Monday night at Rye Town Park is movie night. The Goonies is the movie. So again, family friendly. Next Monday night, right? It was a rain out from this past Monday, so July 21st. If you want to take your family, Monday night. And again, yeah. uh, so we weren't aware of anything in Crawford. That, that's Park, fine. That's so. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so my my question is this: is um, I would probably suggest is, is that uh, 
when you have a lease in Porchester uh, to come back to us uh, because, you know, our policy is, is that we're leasing to residents and local community uh, uh, you know, local community uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. Now, we so, are local. I mean, we do live in the area. Well, the no, area is not the town of Rye. Okay. And uh, with all deference to whether it's a, a church, uh, a, a fraternal organization, the firehouse, you know, the whole thing is, is that the town of Rye uh, and the parks are for the town of Rye residents. So the Crawford Park is for, should be used for the benefit of the town of Rye residents. Uh, that being said, uh, when I, I would I would entertain this right now I'm not I wouldn't entertain it when you have a lease with a, with a local uh, local facility where the congregation is local um, I would I would be open to uh, to listen to the application as it is right now I'm not once you're uh, when do you anticipate signing the lease when do you hope to sign the lease the fall uh, oh. by October well let me ask you. Um, is our policy that they can have uh, someone from the town of Rye vouch for them? Is that or well, I guess they, what they that? could do, and again, Deputy, uh, Deputy Supervisor Villanova is right. We shouldn't be putting in a policy and then the first request no, violate the policy. Can we have a sponsor no. resident? So, so I was no. about to. No, you can't. No. Okay, I just no, said the, the whole policy. thing is the whole okay. the, the whole thing was that that was part of the concern because I can I can put an application in. And then bring in, let's just yeah, say, no, you know, just to make clear. something, someone from out of the area. So that's that's not that's not serving the community. Thank you. Not, none of your congregation are from the town of Rye. Um, I don't specifically know the, the town of Rye. I'm not Rye sure. We have people from Rye, all over the Rye, from all over Westchester area. So we may have some. I mean, our our goal was to serve, you know, Rye Ten in the spirit of the letter I wrote. So we would certainly be open to inviting you know, families in this community to come and enjoy this um, as a way to engage the community. Yeah, I, I, so I think, well, uh, again, I think we applaud your goal uh, and you know, are very support supportive of your goal. And, um, you know, but what's happened just now is we've agreed a policy that says you need to be a right town resident. So if our first timing is not on your side. Yeah. First, if our first decision out of the box is to say, you know, someone who's not a right town resident, when we approve you, that unfortunately, that would be, as, as, as Deputy Supervisor Villanova suggests, difficult. So, um, you know, what I'd like to propose is that as soon as, you, as, as Deputy Supervisor Villanova is saying, as soon as you get that lease, let's let's try and get it teed up and hope, you know. If you can accelerate that process, yeah. obviously, you know, we're, okay. we're, we're, we love the idea yeah. that you're coming into the community. We love the idea that you're family friendly. We love the idea that you're proposing a movie. We very much like this. We very support you, but uh, um, you know, right now, uh, it, it's, just, it's just difficult to do, a, do that uh, in light of, of, of uh, prior circumstances. Yes. Okay. Well, I Thank appreciate you. Your and, consideration. And I apologize. Let me, we'll just get in touch. I, I apologize yeah. for being out of touch. I appreciate touch. your consideration allowing me to address you. Thank you. No, Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. With the lease. Okay. Honorable Mr. Mecca. Honorable Supervisor Carvin, members of the Town Council, Nick Mecca, receiver of taxes. Now, this time of year, anybody that's paid up on their taxes will not hear from us at all until September when it's school bill. However, if you're not, like today alone, we mailed out 475 uh, first installment due from Village of Portchester and Village of Rybrook notices. Mr. Noto now has the list of anything that's over three years old. Next month, we will prepare the list of all the ones that will be going into liens. So if you are delinquent in any taxes, you will be getting a notice from us. So please... Pay attention to the notices, read it carefully, see what it means, what it says, what it's about, what kind of taxes, and if you have a, a misunderstanding or are confused, call the office, please. So, as I say, anybody that's paid in full, we, you will receive nothing from us until September, okay? Perfect. Any questions? Not from me. Any anybody else from the board? No. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mecca, thank you. Um, town Clerk Vespia? I don't have a report. I okay. You submitted your wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Burns? 
No additional report. Thank you. And time to turn the note. Anything to add? Nope, nothing to add. Uh, Crawford Park. I think we covered Crawford Park, haven't we? So it's over to you, Mr. DiCrescenzo. Anyway. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. I would like to address the council. Sure. As long as you're on the topic of Crawford Park. Yep. Come on up, please. Yep. Just tell uh, Nate, give you state your name and address for the record, please. My name's Teresa Stevens, and I live in Rybrook, and I am the horticultural advisor to the Friends of Crawford Park. Oh, great. Unfortunately, Laura Klein, our president, could not be here tonight to address the council, but I did want to say a few words and express our gratitude to the council for helping provide us with financial support in supporting the floral and the uh, plantings and horticultural aspect of what's going on in the park. And so we do want to say thank you very, very much because we have very limited funds this year and uh, a lot of our events that have been taking place have not generated enough income in the way of planting for us to sustain that beautification project going on. So we just wanted to say thank you and we appreciate all that you are able to help us with. And as soon as we get back on our feet, we'll be able to you know, readdress the issues and be able to you know, contribute more towards the support in the way of plantings that are going on. So. Well, it was very kind of you to take the so, time. That, that's a rare you. event. <laughs> People yes. come. Yes. I was I mean, we, we get to see Bishop every month at our town meeting, at our, our friends' meetings, which happen on the third Wednesday of each month. And they take place at the mansion, so you're all welcome to come whenever you are free that particular evening. And we do discuss things that do go on in the park and improvements that we'd like to see made. And our group has kind of diminished a little bit from... Um, manpower so anybody who's interested and who might be willing to come and participate we are always welcome to have new members and uh you know especially people who have you know some sort of affinity with the park whether they're dog walkers or neighbors of the park or they like to participate in that type of gardening activity we're always welcome to have new people coming so well, thank, thank you, you so very, much. very much. We have something like that on the web, the new website. Can we put something like, you know, if, if you're interested in joining a group, here's the schedule yes, or yes, something. Yes, and we will, and we'd be glad to link to yeah. Friends of right. Crawford Park website. Sure. Yes. Well, let me f just uh, thank you, friends for all that they do for well, helping them very welcome. making the the, the port more, more more beautiful. And I, I very much appreciate you coming tonight. Yes, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Just got one comment, to sure. Teresa. I think we've asked for this in the past, and I think it would be it would benefit our relationship, mm -hmm. uh, so we can better support you. Um, a, a lot of you know, there's. I know there was a plan. What was the last plan we had, Bishop? Was for the Friends of Crawford Park. Remember the year? Oh, uh, I'm going to say 2009, maybe. 2000. Okay. Yeah. The last plan we received from uh, the Friends of Crawford Park was 2009. So the plan needs to be. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, updated every year. Oh, you so, mean the site plan? A, a site plan. Oh, so, right. Because mm -hmm. when, when the friends come to us and they say, listen, we have a shortfall this year, we're not mm -hmm. going to be able to pay X or we need this, you know, that's, that, uh, you're hitting us mid, mid, midstream in the middle of a budget cycle. Right. All right? But if we can have a forecast, so if you could come to us in the next couple of months and say, listen, for 2015, this is what we are anticipating and we can better better um, prepare for that and better help support that plan. Mm -hmm. So for all of the things that we're doing, so we're trying to right size the mm -hmm. way that we rent the park. We're trying mm -hmm. to make sure that we control everything uh, so the impact uh, to the park is, is at a minimum right. uh, where we're maximizing mm -hmm. uh, the use of the park for the residents. So if we can get that from you and your group that would help us in the future. And oh, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And we have a meeting tomorrow evening, and so we can propose this at the meeting to come up with a plan and a prospectus of different costs, expenditures that we foresee coming up for next year, as well as... Um, any kind of expansion plan Forecasting, that goes on. Right. right. Um, we were very lucky that um, Bishop was able to get us a grant a few years ago from, I believe it was Susie Oppenheimer. Susie Oppenheimer. And we managed to uh, receive $5,000 in funds towards planting and replacing trees that we lost in the March 2010 storm. And 
to that means, we were able to purchase 45 trees, and wow. with the help of John Zicka, we were able to have subsidized planting, and we really did a huge, huge improvement to the park with that. But that's not something that we could foresee happening, that particular donation coming to, to light or availability for us. But um, in the way of like regular expenditures, we could probably be a little bit more specific for you and come up with some kind of... I guess prospectus you know, okay. well, I <laughs> to help set aside a, a few more funds. So, but wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for coming. All right. Thanks. Okay, Mr. DiCrescenzo. Again, I think we have your report. Any? Uh, uh, is there anything you wanted to highlight, or any questions from the board? Uh, just Jefferson Avenue update, uh, John. We have some concerns as over the past month and uh, South Barry Avenue Bridge. South Barry Avenue Bridge? Yeah, no, I'm you, sorry. you you mean the Otter Creek? Transversing Otter Creek, correct. Otter Creek, okay. Well, Jefferson Avenue Bridge is uh, pretty much on target now for the scheduled uh, completion at the end of July, beginning of August. The uh, only major part of the project left to be done is the paving of, of the bridge and the approaches. But there was another uh, problem that her, had arisen, but they, uh, with the fencing and the guardrails. Right. But uh, according to the uh, village of Marek, the village manager, the assistant manager, it's not going to delay the opening of the bridge in any way. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Otter Creek, I was on the phone today with uh, Tom Otterman, and uh, the original fellow who was uh, interested in doing the work has backed out. Uh, it seems that the uh, problem uh, that he was having was the environmental concerns and what he would have to do. It uh, is not within the realm of his capability. So... Uh, it's a small job, and, and the problem is that, that, that uh, the, the type of work that needs to be done is usually done by big companies who have the equipment to do it properly. So uh, Tom Otterman has got a few people going through the books of all the contractors that do this type of work, and they're putting the word out on the street to see if we can get some people to get some proposals in, uh, hopefully uh, reasonable proposals to the town by the next meeting. Did you uh, reach out to Holt Construction? <laughs> H-O-L-T, their, their bridge contract. They, part of their okay, work I, I don't know if that's uh, one of the contractors that uh, they are familiar with, but I will forward that information to them so that, that we can get the plans uh, sent to the uh, contractor. I'll see if I have... Uh, if you have their contact, contact information, you let if me have, have it. I'm going to give it to you tonight. Okay. Excellent. Any other questions for Mr. DiCrescenzo? Uh, the question I have is um, the railing system that they did. Now, is this going to be an added cost to the town, or is this? It shouldn't be. It was. It was. It was a, a direct mistake by uh, WP Cells that they okay. did not meet the uh, the uh, criteria and what's on the books from the state. Okay. So that should be a cost on them. That, that shouldn't should be, be a cost added. on us. Exactly. Yeah. No, that was that was a design error, and it was pointed out by one of the neighbors, one of the people that they, the design meets the criteria for a vehicular bridge, but not for a pedestrian bridge. They were nine inches, nine inches off. Wow, that's that's a lot. That's not a, a little mistake. No, that's a big mistake. That's a so there's going to be a temporary fix, according to the uh, village of Amaranik. So the bridge will open on time, but then a permanent fix has to be designed and, and built into the bridge. And uh, they, I would I would think, uh, according to the conversation I had, that that the engineers are going to be on the hook for that. And then they got to design. They got to get them prefabricated. So that's going to take a. That's going to take. Well, a it could, could take could take six months to yeah. fix it. But they the uh, village said that there is a temporary uh, stopgap that they're going to uh, put up so that we'll be able to open the bridge on time to pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Okay. And the the Otter Creek Bridge. Um, you know, this guy he says he doesn't have. What is it? Got to put booms down to collect in case they spill. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the and when you scrape, yeah. you, they they got to do the scraping underneath, and then yeah. uh, the fella does a lot of steel work, but he does a lot of work on buildings and and columns and things like that. But he's never. I don't know if he's equipped to work over water. So that's why he's uh, backed out of his uh, initial interest in the project. Yeah. And what? Does uh, Mr. Onneman have any idea how much more it's going to cost to get a company well, he's, to be equipped to do that? Well, he's hoping not, not much more than we've estimated. Uh, so uh, 
He's the, he's uh, pounding the, the pavement. Uh, one of his uh, associates in, in his office, Carl. I think his name is Carlos, is going to be calling a lot of the contractors, maybe not quite in, in the area, but around the area, to hopefully get somebody to come in and look at the bridge and give them an estimate and then do the work. Because it has to be done with, you know, based on the tides. It has to be done based on uh, environmental requirements. But uh, there's uh, a few other uh, and firms. And our window's closing. You know, we're at the we're in the, we're in the mid season now, yeah. so if this, yeah. is, if this doesn't happen, well, the the work can be done. He he, he said uh, comfortably up until uh, October, November. So hopefully we can get somebody exactly. in here before we know it. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be here before we know it. So yeah, um, did he try to get in contact with Jerio? Because Ruggiero did the the small footbridge, the Continental Manor. Uh, I, I don't I don't think he talked. To, I'm not sure he talked to him because we didn't see any proposals or any interest in it from them. But I don't know if he he reached out to them or not. But I'll, I'll give him those two names, Holt and, and Ruggiero. Yeah, try Ruggiero because he was very good to work with. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the footbridge, I mean, he had to do the embankments over and everything. Um, yeah. So, and he built that little that little bridge, so yeah. he might be, not, you know, somebody to contact because he was, he was right on spot with the, yeah, with but the you, price yeah. and right on time finishing the job, too. But you're dealing with steel now. It's a whole yeah, different ballgame. Yeah, it's a whole different ballgame. I yeah. realize that, but he's got the equipment. He had the booms because he still had to put the booms down. That's and true. Okay. he was dealing with concrete, you know, so. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll give those names uh, to Tom Otteman right away. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. Vincenzo. Councilwoman uh, Collins? I just want to say thanks to everybody who's working so hard. Um, I mean, the community projects are really moving along and the move and everybody it's we're really full steam ahead around here and every it's a real team effort and it, you can tell and just thank you to everybody on the stuff thank you thank you uh, council minority yeah with uh, the move to grace church street i'm not trying to be uh, a pain in the neck but i'm just trying to be a little optimistic about a later date i i hope we i hope everything goes smooth and we can get in there for columbus day but uh, I would I would also give ourselves a little extra time just to sure. play it safe. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Let's plan for the worst and hope for the best. That's right. Good. Anything else, uh, Councilman Nardi? No, that's it. Uh, Councilman Yours? No comment. Deputy Supervisor Villanova. Oh, yeah. For, first, uh, I'm, I'm sorry Goldie's not here, but, uh, you know, Goldie's saying, you know, not to, you know, uh, even address the, the opportunity to, to help, uh, you know, people in the town of Rye, uh, you know, especially our, our children, uh, you know, the students in the town of Rye. At the end of the day, uh, you know, the, the numbers don't lie. And if, uh, if we're looking at 13% uh, of the people in the town of Rye are hungry, and people have been doing this, as Goldie said, for many, many years, uh, you know, it, it's obviously it's not working. So maybe something that we can do, maybe we're not going to get it down to zero, but if we can reduce that, that number of percentage of people that are, that are part of that uh, demographic of being fit in this, of, uh, the parameters of being hungry, if we can reduce that, then, you know, you know that, that's why we were elected, if, you know, is to try to help and protect our residents. So if we don't take that opportunity to, to help affect change, uh, that's it. And we've all heard the old adage that, you know, bad things happen when good people do nothing. So we have to do something, uh, and this is not to uh, change anything for goalie's benefit. We're not looking to change anything. We're looking to help, and uh, and that's that's important. Um, I also I, I want to acknowledge uh, most recently uh, the Port Chester Fire Department, specifically the volunteers, uh, celebrated um, uh, six uh, members uh, who received uh, 50 years. Uh, on the uh, with the Porchester Fire Department, uh, I just want to name them real quick: uh, Gerald Donahue, uh, William Jensen, uh, John Bykowski, Richard Bykowski, Stephen Mazurkowitz, and uh, Deacon George Marshall, who's uh, the Porchester Fire Department chaplain. Uh, so I want to acknowledge them, and also want to acknowledge, uh, like uh, Christina Collins, uh, Councilman Collins mentioned, about all of the hard work that has gone into uh, the town of Ryan, what we've done. And uh, the article was out there that uh, the town of Rye, Rye Town Park, the beach, was one of the three cleanest beaches, uh, you know, in Westchester, also Long Island South. And that's huge, uh, you know, to get, to get that, uh, that honor. And that's a lot of hard work. That's a lot of, a lot of work uh, on behalf of uh, the, uh, the management down there and obviously the staffing. And uh, we're looking to uh, maintain that, uh, 
uh, that level uh, for years to come. And then also I want to congratulate uh, the village of Portchester. And the village of Portchester obviously, uh, you know, receives a lot of uh, very different press, uh, especially over the past uh, couple weeks. But Portchester also received, I think it was number three in New York State, of the exciting places to live. And uh, that's right here in the heart of the town of Rye. And uh, to, to get something like that, if it's exciting to, to live and to, to be there, that's, that's important. That's what we want. We want to attract businesses. Uh, you know, the, any, the, we want to attract businesses. We want to attract residents. And uh, that's what's going to help our communities thrive uh, now and help us uh, thrive in the future. Uh, be active. Join the Friends of Crawford Park and uh, help Teresa out. So uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Supervisor Villanova. And... Um, so we were number three in in um, one of the cleanest cleanest beaches. No, no, the mag no, that, the magazine. Oh, no. Most exciting places. To Most live. exciting we're, places to live. Yeah. Do we know what that was like? A, some survey of some sort. Um, I have. I got that email sent to me through a general publication that I follow. I don't remember. Exactly Great. Well, that's one. wonderful. It really is. And it's well deserved. Capital Theater and all the yeah. restaurants and yeah, yeah. just all the goings it's happening. on. And, it, you know, it, it, we're experiencing a resurgence downtown. I think everyone can feel it. There's a lot yep. of great energy. It feels very safe down there now. Yep. You know, so we got to keep it going. Wonderful. Well, look, uh, I can't add, uh, other than, uh, again, uh, following on from the remarks in terms of thanking staff for the hard work, uh, we, we push staff very hard, uh, and, and I'm, I'm very uh, pleased to say that they respond in excess. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we've got our work cut out for the move. Uh, I think we got a festival policy. It's very clear from the memo. A lot of work went into that. I think we got three good recommendations. Um, the model American community is working very, very nicely. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I think years of effort in the, uh, you know, assessment office is is bearing fruit and look we're working hard across the board and I really appreciate all the, the hard work the staff does and, and all the hard work this board puts in as well so thank you very much can I get a motion with that I didn't make my record today unfortunately but I, can I get a motion to get a uh, <laughs> but it was a good meeting nonetheless Joe uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> motion to bring the meeting to a close so moved all in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you <laughs> <laughs>